All right, this is the project of today. The reason we're re rebuilding it is because it's rusted out on the other side here. Yeah, right down here, I believe. Anyway, that's four inch square tubing, 3 16 I found the uh, thickness out by cutting into it. Um, right over here, 3 16 or going back to 3 16 material. Got some collars to put back in here. First thing I'll have to do is unthread all these parts, take them out, and then get my measurements of where these are at. And do the same thing, cut this to length. Hey Kev, what's going on man? What are you doing? Are you coming to help or what? Anyway, uh, get the measurements, cut this to length, get everything tacked up, get everything square, plumb, level, looking neat, and weld it out. Come on. All right, now that I got my pieces taken out, the next thing I'm gonna do is get a measurement on this, a full length measurement. Depending on where I measure from, it's 26 and 3 eighths, a little bit less here, uh, but I'm gonna make it 26 and a half. That's not gonna mess up much, and uh, it's just gonna make it simpler, in my opinion. So I'm gonna make it 26 and a half, but I'm going to be capping this, so I've got some quarter inch plate here, and the way I want to weld this on, I can do it one of two ways. A lot of times, if I'm doing something for like visual only, like handrails or something where it, there's no like pressure inside of it, a lot of times I will take my measurement on the inside of the tubing, the new tubing that I have, <clears throat> new square tubing, and I'll make my cap just a, a little bit smaller. That way I can get a good penetration around it and still sand it down. But in this case, this is a manifold for a fire truck and there's gonna be water pressure on it. So I wanna make this airtight and to hold, you know, potentially way more pressure than it probably will. But so to do that, I'm gonna take a measurement. I'm gonna to go to my new square tubing over there. I'm gonna take a measurement of just, I'm probably gonna take it from outside to inside, which should give me center to center of my wall thickness. Uh, we'll go over there and get a measurement and then we'll cut two pieces out of this quarter inch plate. So what I was saying was, since my pieces are going to be going on the end of my pipe, or on my square tubing, I gotta make my square tubing a half inch shorter, so my final measurement will be 26 and a half. So I'm gonna cut my tubing to 26 inches, and then cut two uh, caps at whatever measurement we find out over here. Obviously our OD, our outside dimension, is four inches, but I'm gonna go from outside to inside, which is about three and seven eighths. Actually, you know what? I don't want to do that. I actually want to go, I technically want to go inside to inside. That way I have this whole corner to weld into. It's essentially like a, like a bevel on a piece of pipe. Like it will have a corner to weld into here. So therefore, you know it's going to be getting full penetration weld all the way around. But from my experience, the reason I'm arguing with myself here is because from my experience, sometimes that's like too small. I'm gonna go with the inside to inside, but then I'm gonna make it a sixteenth longer. So I'm gonna go with three and three quarter, three and three quarter square plate. While we're here, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this tubing. I've got my measurements. I'm gonna write that down real quick. Three and three quarter, so I don't forget. Check my measurement. Twenty six inches. Put down here to make sure. Gonna cut fairly square.
We got our square tubing cut. This is an Evolution chop saw and a Diablo 1490 tooth blade. The Evolution saw is great in my experience because I've had this one on the back of my truck for literally 10 or 12 years. And that's an Evolution older style. This is a newer style, so I believe in their saw, but their blades that they sell are the ones that come with this saw. I've actually found out recently that they have several different blades, so I don't totally want to knock their blades because they do have lots of different kinds, uh, Evolution does, but the ones that I can find locally are just the two or three different kinds, which is the orange, blue, and yellow, and I haven't had much luck with the orange and blue ones. I haven't really tried the yellow ones. I think the yellow ones are for stainless. Uh, don't quote me on that. So anyway, I found these Diablo blades and I really like the Diablo blades. They last a long time. This is a 14 inch and just to show you real quick, it goes all the way through four inch square tubing. That's one of the reasons why I like to use a 14 inch blade is because you're gonna be able to cut at least four inch I don't believe you can get all the way through six inch square tubing. In fact, I'm almost positive because the, from corner to corner on six inch is way too, way too long. But uh, if you had a 12 inch blade, I believe, I actually believe a 12 inch blade would barely get through this four inch. Anyway, my whole point to that is I like the 14 inch because you can cut bigger material. All right, now that we got this piece cut, we'll bring it over here project is coming along I'm gonna go ahead and cut my three and three quarter three and three quarter square plates out of this quarter inch plate I'm gonna have them ready and I'll probably go ahead and cut these tabs out of this quarter inch plate they've only got like eighth inch plate but I'm gonna put quarter inch back on uh, just because it's gonna be a little bit tougher if I had some inch and a half flat, that's what I would cut this out of. Inch and a half, but I but I don't. I've already checked in my metal rack over there. I don't don't have any, so I'm just gonna have to make it an inch and a half by whatever dimension these are. Uh, pop the holes, get a measurement between here, and then make this one match. Just rebuilding this section right here. The reason I want to cut these end caps first is because in my situation I'm using a torch. Um, I don't have a shear like some of these uh, steel supplies have. So working from home and having your own shop, if you don't have a, a shear, we gotta use a plasma or a torch. Uh, you could use a grinder to cut this, a zip disc. My whole point to this is my go-to is my torch because that's what I'm used to, that's what I have. I don't have a plasma yet. So I wanna go ahead and cut everything and then it can be cooling off while I am then starting to cut. I will start laying out these holes for this manifold while those plates are cooling off and I can go ahead and cut these and then cut these, I can let this cool off. I can pick up my plates, clean them up. I just kind of alternate my cutting and laying out. That way plates can be cooling off. This is just a habit that I've kind of created over the years. Technically, depending on what you're building, you could cut something with a torch and have a bucket of water close and dunk it in the water. I've known people to do that in the past on certain projects. I've done that in the past on certain projects. Still do, I got a bucket of water over here. But from what I've heard from my elders and school teachers over the years, that actually can crystallize the metal or, or if you're doing it to a weld, if you just weld something and you wanna cool it off quick, that can potentially crystallize the weld or does crystallize it makes it weaker. So all this to say it's a good practice to let material, let metal cool off first versus dunking it in water. But real world, in my opinion, it's okay to do it on certain things that aren't, uh, you know, life threatening or aren't holding a lot of pressure. But this is a customer's project and it is a manifold that is going to be under pressure. So I do not want to dunk anything in water. So I just practice that habit of letting stuff cool off and then go to do something else not wasting any time. I can still be making progress on a project while my pieces are cooling off. So let's go ahead and cut these plates. I'm gonna square up the end of this plate with this combination square. The 
the way that I measure holes, I learned this years ago whenever I worked at that fab shop right after high school. I measure from this side of the hole to this side of the hole, same side of the hole, and that gives me the center measurement. If the holes are the same size, you can just, to get an accurate measurement versus putting your tape in the middle and eyeball in the middle, you can just measure from the edge to the edge to find center of your holes. So it's a little less than an inch. It's about 15 16 center to center on these holes. And then I am a half inch from the edge to the center. So I can go ahead and lay these out. So half inch from the end and then 15 16 to the other hole and then three quarter is half of inch and a half now i can go ahead and punch these Okay, so what I just did there was, since I'm fixing to drill these holes with my mag drill, I'm gonna be using oil with my mag drill to take care of my bits, keep them from getting dull or brittle or anything. I'm gonna be putting lubrication on them bits, so it's gonna, it's gonna make it hard to see these soapstone marks. So I just went ahead and punched every corner. That way I can go back without having to measure everything. I can just lay my straight edge out over everything after I pop these four holes and uh, uh, mark it without measuring everything. What I love about this Evolution Chop Saw is the chuck that comes with it is just like a mag drill bit. It's got these two flat spots. So the changing the chuck from this is real easy. I really like that about this drill. Oops, don't do that at home. Oops, don't do that at home, boys. Bad on your bits, these bits ain't cheap. Anyway, what I was saying was see these uh, mag drill bits are flat on two sides. That's exactly how that's built. Not all your mag drills have this set up. In fact, mine don't, my Hogan does, is not like that. Still a good mag drill, but it's not like this. All right, now I gotta get a quarter inch bit. Quarter inch bit coming right up. Quarter inch. Let's make it a skosh taller. I mean a skosh bigger. By the way, I have to let you know about these bits. I don't know if y'all can see that or not, but the way them ends are is 
absolutely legit. It's that brand there. I got them. I got these from my local rental place called Kennedy's there in Stillwater, Oklahoma. But I'm sure you might be able to find them online. But I mean, look at them things. It makes it so nice for starting. It's got a much more finer, uh, stay centered, I feel like. And they cut real good. I had to let you know about them. Absolutely quality. Now, go tuck these back away and they'll pick them up. Lose the mag drill. Remark my lines. Oh, remark my lines. And then go to torch cutting. Torch cutting, boys. Torch cut. Next thing I'm gonna do is lay out these holes. I'm gonna make a note that I want my plates right here. Go ahead and lay this one out. Keeping in mind that I'm gonna be adding a quarter inch plate here. I'm gonna say we got five and a half to the center. This is what we're putting back in here. Two and a half is the outside diameter, also known as OD. So half of that is inch and a quarter so I just found center and then I measured from the center over half of the diameter which is inch and a quarter I measure inch and a quarter inch and a quarter and then now I'm just gonna line up the outside of my coupler or whatever this thing is called I call it a coupler but line up the lines there trace it like so this is one way of cutting a hole Another way you could do it is utilizing this straight torch. We actually carry these in the AROS welding store. Uh, it goes, it's made to go on a Victor torch, uh, both the small torch and the large torch. You do obviously have to buy this straight part because your traditional torch has a 90 on it right here versus straight. And all I would do differently is punch a hole. I'll probably cut them all with this just so we have a nice hole, but uh, we would punch, find center, and punch it, and then adjust this, loosen this off, and adjust it to that half mark, which is an inch and a quarter, and then just make our cut. Like they say, there's more than one way to skin a cat. I'm gonna go ahead and mark this other two inch coupler. Got seven inches to the center. I'm gonna hang it over a quarter of an inch for our plate and then come over seven inches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. To the center, mark half a four, which is two. Would make me a straight line. Put a punch mark here. Now we're ready to lay out all these i'm working off the of center it's one thing i've learned through doing pipe work pipeline work over the years like pipe fabrication it's taught me to work off the of centers and that keeps you more accurate in my opinion from what i've learned and that's the habit that i've created be mostly for that reason no matter what size of hole this is you're going to have a punch mark and you can adjust your hole you can worry about the size of your hole later essentially is kind of what i'm saying
All right, now that we got everything laid out, I wanna go ahead and check this one last time. Just so I would remember what size of hole, I went ahead and made a, a rough. I didn't trace it, I just roughed it in. I know I need a one inch here, one inch, and a one inch. These three are one inch, and I got a two inch, two inch, and a two inch back here. But I wanna check my roll. I wanna make sure that everything I got laid out matches this one. So, got a two inch here, two inch here, and then we got a two inch here, two inch over here. And we've got our four holes up here, and our plates are gonna go down there. Pull a measurement one more time. Three, nine and a half, 15 and a half, 21 and a half. Three, nine and a half, 15 and a half, 21 and a half. Seven, seven, five and a half, five and a half. Everything looks good. Let's go ahead and fire this circle burner up. Start cutting. So I've got it set to my one inch holes right now. So we'll go ahead and cut all three of these and then adjust it to our two inch hole and cut them. Before I cut these other ones, I want to make sure my collar is going to be close to fitting. And that is perfect in my opinion. A little bit of gap is okay because to get some good penetration. All right, so I've got all my couplers ready. My piece is cleaned up and ready. The next thing I'm gonna do is figure out how much these stick up. So to do that, I'm gonna run this straight edge right across here, like so, and measure this space. I know this is a quarter inch plate and it slides underneath there. You wanna make sure this straight edge is touching on both sides. And it slides underneath there with a little bit of gap so I'm gonna say we got roughly 5 sixteenths of a gap. I'm going to take my combination square, set it to 5 sixteenths, and then go ahead and start marking all these 5 sixteenths down. And really all I need is four sides of it, each quarter, if you will. Now that all these are marked, I can go ahead and start putting them in like so. And I will be using my MIG welder. It's a Miller Matic 252 035 wire is what I'm using. I've got my volts on my Miller Matic 252 set on 20.9, essentially 21, and then 292 on my wire speed. I always just start welding to see what I need. A lot of people ask where I set my machine. I literally just set it wherever the material tells me that I need it or wherever. Once I start welding, I'll be able to tell if my wire speed's too fast or too slow or whatever. If it's not welding good, I'll go adjust it. But I do like to have my machine set hotter like that. Like I'm, I may weld it out. I probably might end up welding it out in that heat or them volts anyway. But whenever I'm tacking stuff up with a MIG, I do like to have it turned up. That way that tack sinks in there good. There's a few different ways you can get these square. The most accurate, in my opinion, is the happy medium. You thought I was gonna say a square, didn't you? Cause that is my go-to, like on uh, pipeline work, whenever we're fabbing up pieces, a square is always 
the most like accurate in my opinion versus trying to read a bubble on a level. Let's see if I can find a level. Let's see if I can find one in here. Or if I gotta go to my truck and get one. Okay. So anyway, versus trying to find the exact level on this bubble, it might show level, but if you put a square on it, you'd be able to tell if it's off a little bit. But the problem with the square is if your square tubing in this case is rounded at all. That's why I like to check it with a level and a square is what I'm, is what I'm getting at here. So yeah, it looks like it needs to go in a little bit more. And that's why I marked it because my marks will get me close, but still yet you got, you know, your soapstone. That's a 332 thickness. So I mean, 332 this way or 332 this way could throw your level or square off. So you can't even go off your soapstone. You can, all this to say, we're not building a Rolex, as some people would say or whatever, but I just like to practice good habits. I like to practice shooting for perfect. So these are little things that, that I've done over the years to try to make sure that uh, we're getting quality work. Another way that I just thought of here that's gonna be super accurate is this method. Not too bad, if anything, Needs to pull this way a little bit, so I'm just going to put a tack over here. these are welded out I'm going to put my end caps on I have turned my machine down from 22 volts to 18 volts because what we have here is a corner weld and it just does not require as much heat aka volts
All right, got my end caps on. Now, the last thing I need to do is put these tabs on. And with something like this, it is easy to get the orientation off, so it's always good to double check. So I'm gonna start with these holes here. I've got a two inch coupler and a two inch. Roll it once. Got a two inch, two inch, five and a half, five and a half. Then roll it one more time. And that's where our tab should go. I'm gonna measure in between these two tabs. 14 and 3 eighths. And there you have it. There it is. Brand new manifold. Hope y'all have an awesome weekend. Go check out arosswelding.com for welding shirts, the soapstone that you see me use. Uh, it's all right there on the website along with several other things. Let us know what you would like to see in the Aros Welding store. Let us know down in the comments below. Thank y'all for watching and remember, learn something every day.